Robert Hicks in charge of his first international. He's a Super League referee. The Oldham-born 34-year-old with a nice occasion I'll as well. You, right. His you first league Let's international. Out there. So after a beautiful build-up and in front of a decent crowd, we're set for the first Pacific Test. Kickoff. Papua New Guinea, Fiji, to be followed by Samoa and Tonga. It's the Fijians with first use of the footy. A very settled week for them. They are unchanged, 1 through 17, as Kane Evans runs into the teeth of the Papua New Guinean defence. The young rooster playing the ball 25 metres out, and here's Junior Rungida. Some early room for a man who had tears streaming down the sheet the cheeks during the Nomu Masu. Involvement for Tyrone Phillips, the fullback. And now Daniel Saifiti playing without his twin Jacob tonight, just nursing a few niggles. And Fiji complete with a grubber towards the corner. It's a good opening set that is just let down by a bounce of the ball late. And David Mead will come back. International rules, so no seven tackle sets. But Papua New Guinea get their first use of the footy. That's right, but it'll only be six tackles for Papua New Guinea. And the start from Fiji was exceptional. Is there a penalty now to the Papua New Guinea to give them good field position, get there out of their own end against Funakesi there. But the first set of six, 100 metres for Fiji. Off the back of Ron Githy, you mentioned the run from him, got a quick play. The ball really got their set started. And he was very emotional before the game, tears streaming down his cheek, as you mentioned, Matty, which shows the passion and pride that these both teams have in their jersey. And I think we'll see that on the field tonight. It's a fantastic first set from the Mick Potter coached Fijians. And now it's Papua New Guinea being coached by Ma Michael Murrum, famous name in Papua New Guinea Rugby League. Part of that 2000 team as they sent back to the play the ball. The held call coming as the ball was offloaded. The Boas brothers in the halves. It's Asset wearing seven, Watson six for PNG. Puara the hooker. This is Luke Page. One NRL game for St George Illawarra. I'll tell you his links with PNG as the game goes on. Watson Boas gets his pass away. Mead long out to Olam. Olam fighting for the line and losing the ball as he reaches out. Good work from Mead and Olam really gets the ball over the line. There might have been a bit of obstruction in the lead up play that got Mead through the space, but Olam reached out, couldn't quite get the ball over the line, comes up with an error. And you'll see here, David Mead gets through the halfback, just gets impeded a little bit, but I think he was all right to play at that. A good pass over the top to Olam, and as he dives over here in the bottom right-hand corner, just gets knocked out from Cecil Wonga. Olam leads the try scoring for the PNG Hunters in the Intra Super Cup in Queensland. Six tries in eight games, he almost had an international try right there. He's one of six making his debut, international debut for PNG. And the ball behind store in fact it was Morris Kennedy losing the ball over his shoulder for Fiji and now no room for Aku Uate Sisawanga to run together again a big leg drive and the man who's been playing his trade with Newtown second tier Cronulla player Morris Kennedy kicks and chases the Fijian halfback bringing a great story into this game but his kick they're a little too heavy. The only consolation is, as we mentioned, there are no seven tackle sets. Well, it gives you incentive as a kicker, like Kennedy just then, did then, to kick long. And if it does go over the dead ball line, you don't get penalised nowhere near as much. Seven tackles makes a big difference in the modern game. So I suppose we could see that more often than not throughout the game. Hato Otio. In jumper three, talking try scoring. Otio, 12 tries in eight games for Mounties. Canberra's second tier. Now Page. His father was born and raised in Papua New Guinea. His grandfather worked in PNG. That's Luke's link. Puara, that dummy half, sends it to his right. And it's Asaboas hoisting it above Pertec Stadium. It's dropped by Fiji at the back. Coming through, it's the kicker opening the scoring for PNG. Look at these 
scenes. Time off. This will be a zero, mate. You've got to try. Can you check the chasers are onside, please? Well, Robert Hicks sends it to the bunker. A mistake Triple by there. Fiji has it gifted PNG offside. the highlight. It has. It's been a quick and start from PNG. We knew they would. They come out fast. It's been an electrifying start. And Boaz puts the kick 13. up. Phillips comes up with the error. They're outside the 10 Does he get taken out of the play there? The I don't believe so. The kicker of the football player. comes through in Boas. Beautiful take. You watch him do a somersault the all the way over. Gets up, runs the football, held, gets the, the football down. He's not held at all. There's no players on here. Scores the try. We'll go to the board. And this will be a four-pointer for Papua New Guinea in a great start. Ashley Klein, the senior review official, goes for the green lights. Asa Boas, the 27-year-old, in the halves with his brother, Watson. In fact, it's Watson who has kicked and chased through here. He was congratulated by Asa. But it's Watson Boas. He's one of the debutants, and no wonder he celebrated like he'd won the lotto, the Rugby League lotto. There's Asa converting his brother's try. We believe it's the first time Papua New Guinea has had brothers in the halves and look at them. Look Six at and seven, the first men there. The Boas brothers, have a look at them, fired up, excited. Players running in left, right and centre, and so they should be. A proud moment for these guys. They're playing in the halves together. It's special as it is to play for your country and have the opportunity. But to do it as brothers and to be able to celebrate like that on the field for the first try for Papua New Guinea tonight, it's exciting times for the Boas brothers. Just the start. PNG were after. Let's see what that excitement does to them in this set. Luke Page winds up. What a return from Page. He's out for a memorable night. It is a feature of his game. So much intense. Be it the first 60 seconds or the last. He's not the biggest front row forward in rugby league. But I love the way he plays. Luke Page. Timothy Lomai in jumper 11. He was advertised as Edward Garner, but he didn't make it. And Mead goes straight up the middle through a big hole. The Gold Coast fullback, David Mead, captaining PNG, tackled 23 metres out. On the floor. No, mate. Chill you being. Kane Evans. Chill, mate. You don't need to start waving your arms. Just He's the man penalised. Right? Okay. Yeah, there's a big decision now for Papua New Guinea whether they take the two Second points and get to eight point lead. Two. Which they will do, Boas points to the uprights, and it was the lead up work from Puare. Yeah, the dummy half hooker for Papua New Guinea. You jumped out to the right hand. You see, he jumps out, gives the ball back to me. This is the penalty from Kane Evans on me. He tried to slow the play of the ball down. Fiji was struggling to get back onside because it's been all Papua New Guinea to start the match, and they're under pressure. So, probably not a bad play from Kane Evans, even though he did draw the penalty. Great play from Kane Evans. And Matt, if you wind the clock back two or three weeks for the Roosters, we saw Kane Evans doing exactly the same thing again to an outside back. Huge wrap on a young front rower who can A, not only match it speed-wise with the backs, but also has the energy and also puts in the effort to do so. Great point. Enjoying his starting role, as we mentioned, used extensively via the bench by Trent Robinson. Only a handful of starting roles. And Asa Boas adds two more to the tally with a monstrous kick. And he brings the Papua New Guinean supporters to their feet. 8 0 to the underdogs. Yeah, it's, but as we mentioned in the pre game, they tend to start well all the time, Papua New Guinea. So their focus now will be to finish it off and make sure that they continue to play the way, the way they are now, the intensity they're playing at the moment for the remainder of this half and, and for the full 80 minutes. So it's going to be a challenge for them to do that, but they couldn't have started any better. David Mead gapping Fiji a couple of times. It's a shorter kickoff, and again, it's Luke Page just changing direction slightly into Evans and Vunakethi. It's been a busy week for Eloni Vunakethi getting involved there in jumper 13 for Fiji. Working the Garbos, training with Fiji and expecting 
his family's third child tomorrow, I believe. The first son after a couple of daughters. So, Elani Vunikethi. We're glad that everything happened at the right time that he could play tonight. Over halfway. Strong run from Henry Noki. But he's knocked it on at the end and drops his head straight away. A robust carry undone by some handling. Yeah, it's a shame, Matty, because it was a great run from Noki. But he comes up with a simple error. It was at the back end of the tackle count. As you mentioned, they've been dominant to start the match. Been perfect start. And they've just let Fiji off the hook. It gives them time to get a bit of a breather. Try and settle down things and get some momentum with the football in their hands and try and tire out the Papua New Guineans who have had all of the football, 68% possession, to start this football match. So Fiji looking to settle, into giving up the opening eight points of the game. Here's Ron Githa. A strong start from him, an offload right there. Sisa Wonga gives it on to Huna Kethi. He can't beat a Watson Boas. I need you out that rope. Put your hand back. So referee Robert Hicks just repeating his first international Super League referee. She used a couple of interesting expressions. Yeah. Jelly bean at one stage, <laughs> handbag at another stage. He's not afraid to, to blow the whistle either. That's the third penalty, two penalties to one. Pup New Guinea have got the two, the one Fiji in the first 10 minutes of the game. Hopefully he doesn't blow that whistle too much as the game goes on. We'd like to see some free-flowing football. We know how much both of these teams have to offer in attack. Fiji attacking from close range. Fabian Goodall. Scored the try to seal last year's match for Fiji. Now Evans spinning and offloading. Stora goes on, and this is Sudavini Motoreki. Numbers right. That's the way they come. Through Kennedy, his pass to Brown. Yuante slaps it back in field dangerously. It all gets a little scrappy. And Fiji's execution lets them down. Yeah, they had the numbers on the right-hand side, but they had to go through the hand to try and pull the defence of Papua New Guinea in. That long pass from Kennedy was the worst possible option at that time. They had an extra man with Duarte on this outside edge, Sisa Wanga. That's their strength as well as their right-hand side with plenty of first-grade experience. But it was the execution of the half. Kennedy, just the long pass, wasn't on at that time. And Papua New Guinea get the football back again. Not the most convincing scrum, but are there any these days? Papua New Guinea come away. Papua New Guinea playing their 58th official test. Only the nine wins for them. But doesn't their country love rugby league despite that lack of international success? And they will play a role in hosting the next World Cup as Luke Page shoulders his way into the defence. Here's Noki, Henry Noki, one of the eight PNG hunters in this Papua New Guinea team. And the kick to complete is tidy. And by hunters, I mean the team that competes in the Intra Super Cup in Queensland. It was a nice kick. Down the right-hand side, short side, smart play. And they've been in control to start the game. Papua New Guinea and comes off the side of the boot. Probably not the best execution, but finds touch, settles the game down. They've got an eight-point lead. And it's just the control there from the Boas brothers. They do bring in also from Puara, who's had a strong start to the game. It was a nice kick from him. Set up, set up a play earlier for David Mead to get through the gap. So he's had a really good start to the match, Puara. 2017 World Cup. Those games will be played at the Oval, formerly named Lloyd Robson Oval. Now the National Football Stadium, by all reports, a fantastic facility. And Uate for Fiji. He's pushed backwards. Stora playing with the Port Kembla Blacks down in the Illawarra competition. Spent a bit of time with South Sydney. The number nine for Fiji. Vunikethi put to the ground on halfway. 
And the offload hands the ball straight to PNG. So Fiji might be the fancied favourites in this game, but they're not showing it across the first 14 minutes. Some defensive problems, some handling errors. A bit of discipline issue as well. So PNG from 35 metres out, mid-set, Noki. Couldn't beat Saifidi or Evans. Three front rowers colliding. Boas. On to Lafayette. In fact, it's Lomai, and the mistake allows Fiji to clean up and not concede any more points. There's a shame there because the pass from Lomai, if it finds Odio, he was really scored a try. He was in open space. He was just behind Odio. He couldn't get a good grab on it, and they come up with an error too. So, errors starting to creep into the game. Hopefully, they can control the football. This is the pass here from Lomai around the corner. If Odio makes the catch, he's in space, but just goes behind him, and he can't make the catch on the ball. Mothmarecki proving a handful. Store up into dummy half. The captain for Fiji, now Saifiti. Turned 20 during the week. Daniel Saifiti, you've got to remind yourself how young he is. Vunakathi! Vunakathi crashes over. Fiji get their first try. And a big week just got a little larger for Ilona Vunakathi. Yes, and it's good play here from Kennedy, the half from Fiji. He looks to the outside, watch him look out, but then he plays back on the inside. He's, he sells a dummy to the defensive line, hits Funakethi, who's just too big and strong from that far out, but it's the deception and the eyes from the halfback. Kennedy, watch him look out. He doesn't look at Funakethi too late, which sucks in the defense of Puare, who leaves the space on the inside for Funakethi to be too big and strong so close to the line, but that deception, that footwork, Good pass, good execution from Kennedy to get his side off the mark. And Vuna Kethi, the first try scorer for Fiji tonight. He's playing his seventh test for Fiji. He was part of this Pacific test last year. Also part of the 2013 World Cup. Scored a try against England in the World Cup. And of course, six games under the belt in the NRL. Six games that he didn't think would come. As his 28th birthday ticked over with still no NRL experience. A late debutante. But good things have come to those who wait. They have, and I had the pleasure to play with Vinikethi in the nines. He's a great guy. Really champion bloke. You mentioned about him working on the Garbos. And just like the old days in old school, he's a competitor, he's fit. And he's a great football player, but above all, he's a champion bloke. 8-6, Andy, Fiji have taken some time to settle. What have you made of this game so far? Yeah, so far, so good. Uh, I've got to say, sitting next to the Fiji bench down here on the ground, very nervous, shuffling in their seats, edging forward, edging back. Certainly not the start they wanted, certainly not the start they had planned for. They were hoping to use their experience and, and calming influences to be able to lay the platform. That wasn't the case, allowing PNG out to an 8-0 lead but uh, slowly just settling into their rhythm Kevin Nagama was named to play in this game but with a few niggles couldn't convince club to give him the green light so he's watching on Saifiti careers back but there are some other big names of Fiji not out there Marika Korobeti, Sammy Radradra, Arpi Korosau, Jason Bakuya, the Sims brothers, Jacob Saifiti as mentioned it's a decent team when all those players are injected. Well, I mean, if you look at that team and the players you just mentioned then... On top of these ones. On top of these ones, with the international game and the, and, and the game growing in Fiji as it is, if they can continue to, on the way they are now, as Vinikethi gets an offload out of the back, they'll be strong, very strong in the years to come, if not now, to be honest. Tyrone Phillips forced to clean up. The Canterbury Bulldog in the fullback role for Fiji. Wrong gither. One of their best early on. Now Stora spotting some metres behind the ruck and taking plenty of them. Phillips sends it to his left. Kennedy long. It's well taken by Reliami. He tries to free the arm. And there's been a knock-on spotted by Robert Hicks. 
And once again, it was good work from Kennedy. Deception again. He looked to kick the ball, but he throws the pass in the last tackle. The numbers were there. Willie Army just makes an error off the back of that. They look dangerous. They had Papua New Guinea shot to bits on that left-hand edge attack, right-hand defence for Papua New Guinea. And the more errors that Fiji make, the more they let P PNG still stay into this game. If they can execute well, I think Papua New Guinea in some trouble. Trouble. Matty, over the course of the last couple of years, one of the great uh, public bar debates is who's got the best pass in the NRL? And maybe not always at the top of the list, but always in the final is Jared Mullen with his left to right ball. It's, it's crisp, it's long, it's good. You're going to see Maurice Kennedy, the little halfback here for Fiji, has got a perfect right to lefter. We just saw an illustration of that. We'll speak more about Kennedy in a moment as PNG. Come out the round and go that way. And they will go All right wait. on the attack. Come back through the rook. Yeah, Fiji are just struggling, Matty, to control the ruck, ruck of Papua New Guinea at the moment. They're, they're, they're so strong, the Papua New Guinea players, and they're quick, and they're trying to play the ball with enthusiasm as quick as they possibly can. And the Fiji forwards being a lot bigger in size and in stature are just struggling to control that. Here's another test for them. Timothy Lomai goes to the 20-metre line. Now Luke Page. Driving the legs to within eight metres of Fiji's line. Puara twisted around, but he still gets the ball away. Watson Boas smothered by Vunakethi. Now Noki galloping towards the defence. Henry Noki. Puara. And dummy half through Boas. Mead hits a hole. It's a good tackle. A great tackle. Braden Willie Army cutting him down on the spot. One on one. The kick from Boas was a good one. They just needed a trickier bounce for the man at the back in Tyrone Phillips for Fiji. Yeah, they just got to get a little bit deeper in attack. They went out the back to Mead on the play beforehand. And Willie Army came up with a big shot. He was just, they were just a bit flat. The guys outside of me didn't give him an opportunity to throw the pass. Mead had to run the football. Good tackle from Willie Army, as we just seen. But the kick from Boas just had to be a little bit stronger to give his chases more chance of getting to the football. Here's a gap. Willie Army straight through, looking for support. And he comes to the fullback, and both are stopped on the spots. David Mead into Braden Willie Army. And right now, their heads are spinning. What about the contact? Heavy contact from two of the smaller players on the field. Watch David Mead just put a shot on you. I've never seen Mead come out of the line. Look at that. Heads rock back. Willie Arm, he doesn't know what's hit him. He's hit a semi trailer. No, it's not a semi trailer. It's David Mead. Bang! Like your Pacific Rugby League? No, we love it. What physicality. No thought for self preservation from David Mead. Okay. Braden and Willie Army and David Mead collide. Well, David Mead would weigh, what, 83, 84 kilos? Puts his body on the line. He, Willie Army, he didn't even look up. He didn't see him coming. There was only one player to beat, and it was David Mead. He didn't even see him. What a shot. Both of them have stayed out there. Okay, tackle four, go. We do have the uh, concussion rules in place, but both. Sets of training staff have judged them to be a okay. We will continue. He hits the floor, and as he comes up, no, let's go back on. Plenty of conversation between the English referee and Papua New Guinean team. Yeah, it seems to be the same as the referee just said. The same penalties. It's hand on the on the ball or having a second shot at it. Just as they're about to play the football, slowing down the ruck. As I mentioned, Fiji have had tr trouble with Papua New Guinea's play the ball speed. And I think Papua New Guinea have had the same with Fiji. And both teams trying to slow it down. That's why there's been so many penalties, I think, on both sides. Three penalties now, Papua New Guinea to two, Fiji. And all of them have been for similar circumstances. And this, is, this is interesting watching this at the moment. That's the halfback, Maurice Kennedy, the goal kicker, that having issues with his right hamstring. They're obviously taking the penalty goal here, Fiji, but he's down getting some treatment and already conceded that he won't be taking the kick. The story about Maurice Kennedy is that in an under-16 grand final, he fractured and dislocated his neck. Doctors said he could have been dead, he should be in a wheelchair, but instead he's worked his way 
back to rugby league. He's a touch football sensation. He's got a great pass, as identified by Andy already. But unfortunately, it's a little hamstring or buttock complaint right here that's limiting him for the time being. Yeah, Quite remarkable. Ho ho it is remarkable, no doubt about it. It's a, it's a great story. And to be honest, he's really controlled this football game, Kennedy, for Fiji, and it's been really important. They're, they're maestro, you could say, for the first 22 minutes of the game. So hopefully, as I see him stand up in the background, he'll be right with his hamstring and he can continue on in the game. Sidovini Mothamareki assumes the kicking duties and steers it through. The bench applauds Mothamareki playing for Norths this season. And that man, Maurice Kennedy, five games with Mounties through this season after coming through the under-20s ranks with St. George Illawarra. We are locked up at Pertec Stadium. And as we expected, no shortage of action. Plenty of highlights early on. In the corresponding game last year, it was Fiji 18-0 at the break. A bit closer. 12 months down the track. Kane Evans. And the ball released in the ruck late. And this is Tui Kamikamika. Born in Fiji. I know I think in a different way to most sadly, Matt. I'm still trying to wonder what David Mead and Braden Williami discussed when they were on the ground staring at each other. Wouldn't have that been a conversation? What day is it? Where are we? What's your name? Just some of the possibilities, Andy. For a few seconds, anyway. Again, it's Kamikamika putting his hand up for a run, playing with the Sunshine Coast. Kennedy. Goes for Tyrone Phillips, wrong gither, back to his fullback. Phillips kicks, chases, Mead is there. He retrieves safely David Mead and he's put on his back 10 metres out. It was good positional play from David Mead. Tyrone Phillips put a nice little kick in, but the experience of David Mead at the back, who's had a strong start, we just spoke about the hit that he put on Willie Army only moments ago. And then that nice little pick up from David Mead just can, remains to give Papua New Guinea that momentum that they've had to start the match. Both teams completing six of their nine sets through the first 24 and a bit minutes. Huara passing close to the ruck and finding Brandy Peter. Now Boas, it's Asa Boas kicking. It trickles into the end goal. Some work for Tyrone Phillips, who's trapped in goal. More than that, he's forced over the dead ball line. The chase was led by Kato Otio. I love what the Boas bring, brothers bring to the Papua New Guinean team. They bring control. They've got that natural flair and enthusiasm from Papua New Guinean players, but they bring that kicking game and that game sense. Beautiful execution. Otio comes through, puts him over the, the dead ball on Tyrone Phillips, and it was the right play at the right time. So good execution from Papua New Guinea and building pressure on the opposition in Fiji. Kato Otio has to be the first dual international for volleyball slash rugby league. A newcomer to this sport, but gee, isn't he making a go of it as part of the Canberra system. PNG set up again. Randy Peter put on his back. An urban myth that he was named after Greg Alexander, this man Brandy Peter, but apparently his mum just liked the name. Kurt Baptiste on as interchange hooker. From 10 metres out, it's Baptiste firing the ball for Boas. And then Nene McDonald. He had his ankles wrapped up. He stood and offloaded, back for Mead. And they stopped 10 metres out. Right where they were a moment ago. Baptiste goes the same way, a flat ball. They come back against the grain, Papua New Guinea. The Commodores with an offload for Brandy Peter, who lost the ball as he crossed the line. 
Oh, so close for the Kummels. What a shame. What a shame for the Kummels. Papua New Guinea. Drifting across field was Griffin. Gets the offload out the back to Peter. If he catches the football, he reaches out, but it's not there. He's dropped it. Rongida comes up with a try saver. And in the process, was able to get the ball out of the hands of Peter. Jim, put your head in, mate. Let's get his head in the Brandy. Could have come up with a try, but unfortunately come up with fresh air. David, get your head in. Okay, ball. Out! Brandy scored plenty of tries at this ground. Just a couple of decades ago. That's twice now. I won't tell you again. So the referee's patience running out with PNG. It was Fabian Goodall drawing the penalty for Fiji with his run. And once again, it's a penalty for the exact same reason as the one beforehand. It's hands in the rucks, trying to slow it down the Papua New Guineans. And the referee, he's, he's shown he's not scared to blow the penalty. So hopefully both teams learn from this and we can see a free-flowing game of football. Well, Andy Raymond, you and I don't go to Fiji to play rugby league. We have other purposes. But uh, when you look at the growth of Fiji in rugby league over the last decade, from 12 clubs to 52 clubs, it's a country that could be anything. Absolutely. And, and at the, the root of it all is the fact they are just amazing natural athletes. They've got an incredible hunger. Um, and we are only going to see more and more of it in the years to come. But... I'm happy not to play footy over there. I'll just go back to Manor Island and enjoy the coldies by the pool. Tyrone Phillips will play it 10 metres out, wrong gither. He goes on to a support player fresh onto the fields. Massive numbers left. Dot Ivanadu. Out of dummy half. Trying to force his way over. James Storey is stopped short by Baptiste. Kennedy Long. They're okay. The kick across field is fielded brilliantly. They celebrate the try. It's given now. Eddie Gio. A show of athleticism out wide. The 25-year-old on debut for Fiji. He plays okay. with the Nadira Panthers. And what about this? Well, it was the skill from Mothenrecki. The 5-8, the number 6. Watch him step off the left, kick off the right. That's not easy to do. Execution perfect to finish it off as well. And G.O. gets the try in the left-hand corner. Plenty of work to do. As I said, a beautiful kick from Mothin Recky. But he had a great take from G.O. on the left-hand flank. And he gets another try for PNG. PNG, sorry, Fiji. I'm sure that... Mick Potter won't mind me saying that it's been a steep learning curve for Eddie Gio this week. That's what his teammates call him. That's what we were told to call him. But his full name, Etuate Giona Mathawa. Sorry, mate, can you say that again? <laughs> I didn't hear you. Eddie Gio for you and I, Andy. I love the fact that he's changed it to Gio for us. And even then, it's still hard. <laughs> Etuate Giona Mathawa. That's the last time. I give the family the full pronunciation tonight. But what a great try. It was a beautiful kick from Moffat Racky. I said that in the call, and now he'll try and kick this one from the from the sideline. He had plenty of work. He came off his left foot, put it off the right foot, and then he still had to get it exactly right in a pinpoint accuracy whilst moving forward. And it was just a beautiful kick from Moffat Racky. Good striker of the football, and he kicked his first one, his first opportunity well from the left hand side. Can he kick another one? The Hurstville United junior who spent some time with the Dragons under 20s, given the kicking duties, and right out wide, Moth and Recky pushes it across the face. 12 8, the last 12 points to Fiji unanswered. Eddie Gio. Getting the most recent four. Yeah, I think if they can control the football, they can score more tries off the back of it. They had plenty of numbers on that left-hand side. Stora jumped out of dummy half. The experienced hooker jumped out to the right-hand side. When they had about a five on three or six on four, it was a massive overlap to that left-hand side. They come up with the kick off the back of that, which was beautiful, and it was a great try. But if they'd gone through the hands and they had 
Papua New Guinea shot anyway, so Papua New Guinea going to keep fighting to stay in this match. Ron Gither will return the kickoff. Fiji with nine players boasting NRL experience, six of them playing NRL this year, compared to PNG, who have four players with similar experience, three appearing in the top flight this year. Stora flats out of dummy half. Bokonivalu. Stora keeping it close to the ruck, the veteran of the Fijian lineup at 34 years of age. Mothamureki kicks out towards the wing of Gio again, but in the air and down safely. David Mead continues his strong game. He does, he continues to produce every time he gets involved in the play. He's had some big plays already. His positional play at fullback has been brilliant. He's had a big year for the Gold Coast Titans and he continues that form here today. He needs to. He's obviously a leader for Papua New Guinea, one of the experienced players. And he's got that X factor that can really turn this game on its head and he's having a great impact so we've, far tonight. We've spoken about their athleticism, both sides, both countries, their effort, their energy. One thing both camps have been really looking at this week is overall game management. Not just coming up with a special play at a special time, but about managing your game for 80 minutes. Fair effort here by Tyrone Phillips to field the kick and get back into the field of play. But up quickly, the defence will now try to pin Fiji in their 20 metre zone. That's tackle two, they're five metres out. Aku Uate, a long way from his wing, looking to get involved. Most of that run went sideways. Kennedy gives it to big Kane Evans. Thinks about the offload. In the end, it's a handoff. Storup sends it to his left. Fabian Goodall it is. Part of the manly setup. Dokit Navalu plays the ball 10 short of halfway. A kick from centre field down towards David Mead. And in the end, that set did a pretty good job of getting them away from their goal line, Fiji. And some pressure right here for the Papua New Guinea winger, Justin Olam, who loses it behind him. Alex Wehrer picks it up, and now there's a penalty to PNG. They could be a little bit lucky here, Papua New Guinea. As Cesar Wanga questions the call to the touch judge and then the referee marches 10 metres down the field for descent. And it was David Mead who put pressure on Alarm on this left-hand edge and wasn't sure if it, if it was right or not, but he was under a lot of pressure and good defence from Fiji, but unfortunately for them, they give away a penalty. Kato Otio standing on one leg before being forced to ground. Baptiste through Puara. And this is Brandy Peter. He's a handful. Peter, isn't he? As Baptiste scoots for a few metres, then passes. Okay, okay. Rod Griffin gets the ball away for Nene McDonald. He drops it, picked up by Fiji. They dropped it backwards. Tyrone Phillips spots a gap and scoots. Tyrone Phillips chased by Mead and Mead stops him scoring. Another try saver from David Mead. The two fullbacks in hot pursuit and now it's being picked up, but the whistle will bring Justin Olam back. Well, Justin Olam's about 10 metres offside on this left-hand side for Pupney Guinea. What about shot out of a gun? Tyrone Phillips, how quick was he? We thought he was home and hose, but David Mead comes across out of nowhere. What's his try saver? Tries to get the football over, still has the strength, David Mead, to hold Tyrone Phillips up. And there was a huge opportunity for Fiji off to the right to score a try off the back of that, but all of Pupney Guinea were offside. It's a sporting cliche, captain's knock, but so far that's exactly what this game has been from David Mead to stop Braden Willie Army, the last line of defence, and to chase, to run down 
Tyrone Phillips right there. That is two tries saved by David Mead. He's come from way offside, never made an attempt. And all you're trying to do is stop a try. It's ten minutes. Nice, Professional foul. Nice. Well Justin outside, Olin mate. goes to the bin for a breather. Get in the bin. Two I think it's a really good call from the referee. As disappointing as it is to see a player go off the field and no, 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 not like that. Gets 10 that. minutes Let me get out your way. for being offside. He was so far in front of the referee. It was a professional okay. foul. He did intentionally stop a try. And he knew he had to come with a player. Else it would have been a four-pointer. So a good call from the referee. And Fiji have a huge opportunity in front of him now. This halftime break will be a big one. We won't see him until early in the second half. Storer sends it to his left. A fantastic chance for Fiji. Fabian Goodall cut down metres short. They go the same way. The kick again for Gio. He's having a night out, young Eddie. Well, once again, the Fijians prefer to put onto the boot instead of the hands, and it comes up successful again. Moth and Recky, a beautiful kick, same combination off to Gio on the left hand edge. They had the numbers, it was a three on two, or even a three on one there, as you can see. fans you've got reason to celebrate not only a half-time lead but a big announcement that has come in the lead up to this game that we'll tell you about after the conversion attempts and see the red of Tonga behind him Tonga and Samoa with Jimmy Smith and Andrew Voss to follow this game on Fox Sports strap in and enjoy Pacific Rugby League on Fox Sports as Moth and Drecky pushes it across the face but October 8th this year, just announced Fiji against Samoa in Apia in Samoa. Funded back by the Australian Rugby League Commission. And who knows, that man might be scoring more tries in Samoa, Eddie Gio. Yeah, we've spoken about the players that aren't actually playing this test match tonight. Add that to these players like Gio, and they could have a really strong team coming up against Samoa. You can't underestimate how important these games and these test matches are to the game of rugby league internationally. We really need it. I think we need to support them, obviously, with more test matches. But also financially, too, I think we need to help them out as much as possible because there's so much potential from all these countries to really make our game grow globally. Here's Kane Evans. Fiji, just the 21 internationals. They're hunting their ninth win, having lost 13. Aron Githa. Not quite the amount of international outings as PNG, but that will grow as Stora sends it down the short side through Sisawanga, who hasn't played any NRL this season. Now Uate. Right on halfway. Evans. Chewie Kamikamika. 
Another of the Fijian-born players in here. Dokon Ivalu gets the ball away for Stora. Playing in his 10th international for Fiji, Stora, the captain. The kick now into a PNG player. Backwards and they're able to clean up. Starkroth Amin, the man to do so for PNG. Now Nene McDonald. Into the final minute of this first half. 16 unanswered points to Fiji. After Papua New Guinea raced ahead from the kickoff. Brandy Peter straight into Rongitha. It's been a first 40 minutes to make sure you come back for the second 40. A of excitement and as the kick goes out on the full. But with 20 seconds left in the half, PNG might not pay a price for this. It's Boas slow back to his feet. Asa, there were claims that contact came a little late. Well, there wasn't much to it. And if it was late, it was barely. So play will continue. No, there's nothing in that at all. Boas, a bit of a rush of blood. I, I, I know what his intent was there to put the football into touch. Slow it down, let's get into half time. They've only got 12 players on the field with one of their players getting sent for 10 minutes. But in doing that, he's given an opportunity. One last shot now for Fiji to try and come up with a big play on the stroke of half time. So defensively, really important now for Papua New Guinea. Is there some Fijian flamboyance coming right here? One final play in this opening half. Kennedy to Sisawanga. Well, they just settle. Nothing flamboyant. They're happy at 16-8. They don't want to risk an intercept or an error for a Papua New Guinea race away try. So after the first 40, it's Fiji over Papua New Guinea, 16-8. 800 different languages in Papua New Guinea, but one language that everyone speaks is rugby league. So wherever you're watching, Suva, Nandi, the Coral Coast in Fiji, or around Papua New Guinea, enjoy the second half. Fiji leading 16 8. But Randy Peter winds up Help! as they try to bridge that gap. Just dance back at an angle. It's Mead, you might notice. A lot of the Papua New Guinean players wearing blue boots. It was a gift from their captain, David Mead, this week. His sponsor, Blades, giving everyone in the PNG team a pair of bright new blue boots. And they get the first penalty. It's one of the many great stories that happen in and around these games, Braith. It is, and it's great work from Blades and the captain, David Mead, to be able to get, the, get those boots to the Papua New Guinean players. And, it might seem like a simple gesture, but one that I think would mean a hell of a lot to these players. And obviously not as fortunate as others, and just the opportunity to play the game, but he given boots and be looked after and play in a test match, and it just all adds up to what is great for the game of rugby league. Baptiste has Brandy Peter running onto the ball. He's in his third year, all three years, with the PNG Hunters in the Intrust Super Cup. There are a couple in that boat. Adam Colovey is forced to ground. 22 metres out there in great position. Papua New Guinea. The ball came from Asa Boas. Brandy Peter was stopped. Now Baptiste threads his way around the rack and crashing through the ball. They've come up with another try, PNG. They just could not be stopped that close to the line. Well, I don't think anyone was going to stop. I think it's Carave on the left-hand edge for Papua New Guinea, and it was the work from Baptiste out of dummy half. Not a bad replacement to come on. The Canberra Raider hooker throws a pass, and it's Carave or Odio? Odio it is. Carto Otio. Otio on the left-hand edge, the centre for Papua New Guinea. Flies on the football. How big is he? He is massive. And how determined is he? Wrong gither was the one that tried to, was a great defender, and has defended well in the first half of Fiji. Tried to come up with that play on Otio, but he was just too big and strong, but he didn't leave anything in the tank. He really charged into that defensive line. His one try tonight keeps his perfect record in 2016. He hasn't played a game this season without scoring. 
eight games for Mounties, 12 tries into the test, and he gets another one tonight. Well, I know why he scores tries. He continues to run the football like that. It's going to be hard to stop from anywhere. He showed a lot of skill and talent. He's got speed. He's got the size as well, but you can see he was a foot taller than most of the forward pack then from Fiji. And they just couldn't stop him that close to the line. He scored a hat-trick. He scored a couple of doubles. He made his international debut last year. Zato Otio. Asa Boas with the conversion attempt. Just the start. PNG needed. Much like their beginning to the game. They've kicked two from two tonight, PNG, and they stay perfect right there. 16-14. And you're right. Look at the, the frame of him. You can see why he was an international volleyballer. Would have spiked plenty of balls back over the net. And right there, he spiked a few VGs as he surged through. Tell you what, he's a fair target too if he kicks in play. So for the Boas brothers, if, if it's fifth tackle options, you're looking over that left hand side for Otio. Using his height to their advantage. As we're watching this game and we're mentioning the stars who are playing for Mounties, you realise what a side Canberra has at NRL level to keep them out. And the depth available to Ricky Stewart as the season ticks on. It's a big jump, I know, but gee, they have some prospects and potential in the lower grades. This is Korovay. Another with one test for PNG under his belt. Baptiste kicks, and it goes out on the full. Just what they wanted to avoid in the set after points, giving Fiji a full set starting 10 metres plus into their own half. Well, that hurts. That really hurts for Pump McGinn. You can see he slipped on his left foot. Right foot, it goes a long way over the touch line on the full from Baptiste. They just scored a try. They just got themselves back into the match, only two points behind. And then he goes to kick early. You could tell he had the right intent and intentions to try and get the, the moment, keep the momentum, put the ball in that right-hand corner. Big chase, but unfortunately, the execution wasn't there. He's Braden Williami. Will they head towards Aku Uate in this set? This game involves the leading scorer for Gold Coast in tries, David Mead, and the leading scorer for Newcastle in tries, Aku Uate, but he'll have to wait the latter. They've come up with a terrible error early in the set. They have, and this is how they started the first half. Willie Army comes up with an error here. Just There's a hand in there, but that's a loose carry. And it goes into the defence of Papua New Guinea. It's a knock-on, there's no doubt about that. And Papua New Guinea let off the hook yet again. So we've got okay, maybe a bit of an issue with the microphone there for the referee. Nice help from his touch judge. Teamwork from the referees. And I often see the touch he's running on with their flag hoisted. I thought there was an incident in the, in the ruck. Just checking there was a need for a scrum and not something other. The referee tonight, Rob Hicks from Oldham in England. Making his international debut. Rod Griffin, he's the only survivor from 2010 when PNG last played in Sydney. Eye catching performances with Ipswich, and now he's with West Tigers. Number 12 for PNG, Rod Griffin. Keep an eye out for him. Here he goes. or helped it switch all the way to the interstate challenge after winning the Intra Super Cup. Baptiste out of dummy half and good tackle. Close to their own goal line. But it went on a little too long. It did. It was probably not the right option from Baptiste to come out to the right-hand side. They had huge numbers to the left, Papua New Guinea. And it was a big shot Time on Baptiste. Do you want to come on and it was two he come to Kamika. Hang on, Ball and all. The same. physicality about it. I just got no earpiece. Yeah. Still, you've got a problem with the referee. Like in another room. He said he's got no earpiece, so he can't hear anything. Swear to me, it's all right. Which is a problem. I'm sure, he's enjoying Sydney's 
balmy autumn as we look at the penalty again to become a Kamika having made a fantastic tackle just holding on a little too long and forcing Kurt Baptiste back to his knees a little too long <laughs> <laughs> way too long for become a Kamika there that, that is a penalty Hello, one, two, three. for sure he just he came up with the big play with the big shot and it was a dominant tackle he didn't need to carry on as long as he did but he's rewarded Fiji oh, with, a, no. with a big rest yeah, off the back great. of the, uh, the earpiece on, playing up for the referee and we've had a big stop in play for the this game on the road. We are wide for sound again. Communications open. Luara gives it on to Korove. Looking for more points in the second half. Boas. It's Asa Boas popping his way across field. Otio points and now gives it to Brandy Peter. Good footwork for a big body up top. Brandy Peter. Baptiste to Corave. Still this goal line defence from Fiji holds Baptiste. This is Watson Boas. Close. He scored the first try of the game. Baptiste kicks for his outside men. And somehow Fiji have cleaned up and not knocked on. Well, it was Moth and Recky again. Watch the hands from Moth and Recky. Baptiste puts the kick in. Watch this take. Oh, comes off his hand onto his right foot, back into his hands. So a little bit lucky. But another big play, another penalty again to Fiji. Now the penalty counts 6 5 in favour of Papua New Guinea. Let's get back to where we were in the first half, and yet again for a penalty with her hands in the ruck, which we've seen time and time again from the Super League referee in his first test match. Really involved with the players, giving them clear and concise instructions. So Fiji, this is Fabian Goodall twisting in the tackle, stopped by Rod Griffin. Kamakamika. He's been some time at Parramatta, so he'll know this ground well. Kamakamika, Moth and Lorecki, out to Sisawanga. Kane Evans. A flat ball for Dokken Valu. Stora runs and kicks. He'll chase his own kick as he held back. Mead field safely. No whistle. It wasn't a smart play from Stora. Then on the fourth tackle, they haven't had much football for the last five to ten minutes of this second half so Stora really had to play out the set of six he can't with a better tackle on the fifth option instead of that little grubber on the fourth up against David Mead who really hasn't put a foot wrong at the back for Papua New Guinea either Brandy Peter Papua New Guinea playing in Sydney for the first time since 2010 Olam Plays the ball, Otio gets his ball away. They're starting to promote the footy now. PNG Mead, he looks for support, finds it in Baptiste. Watson Boas kicks, looking for an outside player, but there, Ron Gither takes it over the dead ball line. Well, a good piece of play from Papua New Guinea. It started with Otio. Get the football over to him as much as you can. Dangerous with the football in his hand. Off at the back, Mead to Baptiste. Baptiste on the Boas, he puts the kick in. Ron Gither. Covers well in defence. Look at the big fellow. He's tired as the Papua New Guineans come through and try and score a try, but he saves his team on that occasion. Does Ron Gither, the big fella, has been strong today for Fiji. We've spoken a couple of times over the course of the last 50 minutes about game management. That's what we're seeing at the moment from PNG. Some sustained pressure, some control with the football, and as a result, they've got Fiji on the back foot. Randy Peter again, he loves it. He's only cut down by Sisawonga, who comes in secondary to Junior Rongither. Korove. 
fighting to stay on his feet, Adam Colavay. So good position, Boas pulls Griffin underneath. Rod Griffin goes onto his back. Baptiste just gets the ball away as he goes to ground. Puara, Nene McDonald, Nene McDonald winding up, crashing towards the end goal. You can see how close he is. Puara fires a ball for Watson Boas to get his second of the night. Papua New Guinea have the lead and Watson Boas has played a big role in it. He certainly played a big role, Watson Boas. He gets his second try of the evening. Papua New Guinea hit the front and it's off the back of a beautiful pass for Puara in dummy half. Look at that, hits the hole. Moth and Recky looks in. He's beaten by the pass of Puare. Gio tries to come in and tackle. Boas can't get to him. Good execution. The excitement on the face of Watson Boas as the Putney Guinea players run in from everywhere and they're back in front. Well, they can set something special. They haven't won on foreign soil since the 2000 World Cup. Their win came in France. Any victory has been on home soil, not foreign soil. Are they closing in on a shock win and a big result for them? It would be a huge result and a big challenge for Papua New Guinea. And we said it in the pre-game, I've said it throughout the matches. They go through a lot of highs and lows in matches. They, they haven't been able to finish out matches in the past. They can start well, but it's how they finish them. And Andy spoke on the sideline about game management and, and they've certainly improved that to start this second half and they were great at the start of the first half but they lost that as the game went on now that's the big challenge for them is it in the next 28 minutes of this game can they keep the intensity up can they keep that physicality but also the smart game management that we just seen from Puare and Boas to come up with that try can they continue to do that as this game goes on that's what if they can they're a big chance of winning but they have to do that to our class Fiji who have got the more first grade experience and probably more X factors throughout their team. Watson Boas scores the try. Asa Boas lines up the conversion attempt, needs it to come back. He pulls it across the face. It stays 18 16 to PNG. So that 2000 World Cup I mentioned, it was famous for Papua New Guinea. They were coached by Bob Bennett, Wayne's brother. And the likes of Michael Marum, John Wiltshire, Marcus Bai, all part of tonight's coaching team, were part of that PNG playing squad that had a fantastic run through that World Cup. Well, it's good to have those guys represent Papua New Guinea as players, but now share their experience with these players. And you know, we, I think if you look at the experience of that and, and what they can give to these players, is, I suppose it's invaluable. Canberra Premiership winner. David Wesley also part of the coaching team. I trust they've enjoyed the week. Papua New Guinea down by eight at half time, but now they have the front and Justin Olam, the winger, has a spring in his step. Alex Wehrer in the headgear. Baptiste passing and the tackle made by Ron Gither and Kamakamika. Brandy Peter. That's his 13th hit up for the evening, leading anyone in Papua New Guinea. In fact, it's a game high, Brandy Peter. Yeah, Baptiste, he's been extremely effective at a dummy half for Papua New Guinea. He's added a new dimension to the bit a couple of times on the fifth tackle. Big shot on Werner Kethy. Werner Kethy Griffin. Adam Korovay was there barking a few words as well. Yeah, I was just saying quickly, I'll touch on Baptiste. He's come up with a couple of poor fifth tackle options that have cost Papua New Guinea good field position. Hopefully on this occasion it doesn't cost them too much. Here it is here. Korovay and Griffin. Big shot on Werner Kethy. Tyrone Phillips calls Junior Ron Gither back the other way. He crashed into those two back rowers again, Griffin and Colvay. 
adding a bit of starch to the PNG defence. Mothan Recky threatened to throw it a long way and instead dropped it under pressure. Picked up by Stargroth Amin and Stargroth's away. Named supposedly after a Spanish film star, Stargroth Amin. Matt, I'd have to check with the Fox Sports lab, but I believe he is the first Stargroth. <laughs> <laughs> well, he is convinced he's named after a Spanish film star. Team management couldn't find that film star on Google, so we'll take his word for it. Baptiste in the dummy half. It's fun at Pertec Stadium because we've got a good footy match on, played by enthusiastic, passionate players. Mead running off Asaboas. Puara. And he passes again for his half who reaches out. He couldn't resist the double movement. Watson Boas, he scored two. Why not try to steal three illegally? Yeah, unfortunately for Watson Boas, the temptation was too much for him to just reach out. He was tackled, no doubt about it. Elbow hits the ground there, advances the football forward, and he wanted the hat trick. He wanted his third try of the evening, and the line was just in front of him. The temptation too much. It's a try in Port Moresby. <laughs> They ripped the new National Football Stadium down, if you call that back over there. But the right call for Watson Boas. Can you imagine some of the scenes in Papua New Guinea right now? Their team up 18-16 as outsiders hunting a rare international win. We hope you're enjoying the coverage on MTV in Papua New Guinea. But your men have some work to do as Daniel Saifiti goes up the middle. Still a long way to go in this one as Braden Williama uses a fend but can't get away from Nene McDonald. This is Fabian Goodall. Now Vunakethi. Martha Dredic here, the 5'8", heavily involved as they go left and right. Here he is again, Sinavini, Martin Drecki, back for Saifiti. And they've been ruled to have knocked it on. Yeah, Martin Drecki with the pass around the corner, he did shape the kick, he takes the line on, and there's an error off the back of it. He's, he's had a lot of responsibility with Kennedy for Fiji being off the field, the halfback. He's had to step it up, Martin Drecki, and he has in the first half. The second half, he's had a lot of responsibility, and... Unfortunately, he can't be the wrong option on that occasion. Here he's stepping back around the corner. Safiti's the man on the inside. It's the front row you wouldn't think is going to hit a hole there. So probably the wrong option from the half. Luke Page will play the ball. 23 metres out from his line. Not a good run from Justin Olam. Baptiste looks for open field as Otio loses his legs. Tackled by Ben Nakambuwa. Page collides with Tavita Cottrell on for Fiji and jumper 16. Watson Boas puts it high above Pertec Stadium, timing his jump and making the catch safely. It's Braden Williami. Keogh can't get much go with that run. In his second season at Manly, Braden Williami. Four NRL games this season. Good defence, PNG. To stop Fabian Goodall. Moth and Recky passes for Nakabuwa. Second year of under 20s at Melbourne, Ben Nakabuwa. Tyron Phillips goes on to Ron Gither, back to his fullback. Phillips kicks, chases, we've seen his speed, and he almost gets there first. Tackled on suspicion by David Mead, who will concede the penalty. Oh. Well, I can't. I can't believe this. I don't think Phillips had eyes for the football at all. He puts the chip up, goes through. He's not. He's looking at the defender. He's not even looking at the ball. Mead 
comes in contact with him, hits on suspicion. Oh, that's a rough penalty. I don't think either player was going to get that football anyway. Well, me just made his mind up. I'm making a tackle no matter what happens. But Phillips only had eyes for weed anyway. He didn't have eyes for the football. Anyway, play on. Here come Fiji, wanting the lead back. Nakam Bulwai. Stora gives it long for Moth and Lecky. Fabian Goodall puts a step on, looping around. Nice hands. Gio gets three. He knocks it on. He's knocked it on. The referee straight into position to say no. Well, he did say no, but he's going to have a look now, the referee, because he knows he's got the option. He was running back, the referee. He said no try. Just check the ground in, please. And he wasn't going to go to the bunker until a touch judge tipped him up and said, mate, have a look at it. And he has. And I think we're going to see a knock on from Gio. Well, you can see the referee getting his earpiece checked a little earlier. Well, lucky he got it checked because he was running back and he wasn't going to the bunker. And to the Gio was in open space. The hands here, the offload. And watch Willie Army, quick hands on the Gio. Gio's in open space, put the ball down. They come across late, knocks his hands. It's a, it's a knock on, there's no doubt about it. And he could have had a hat trick, could have got his team back in front but comes up with an error, and they hold on, Papua New Guinea. Time off. Close call for both teams. Hold it. It just shows on that occasion, but without the bunker, the referee was confident in his call. He was heading back to, to, to the 20 metres for a restart. But they've ticked him up and said, mate, use it while you can. So he does, but it just shows that stop in play there. If he just let it go, he was confident in his own ability to make that call, and he got it right. Should have backed himself. Two. No, no, get square. Put on his back. He's holding him in. Hold. Go. Now, Timothy Lamai. Move. Hit this line. Go. Let's make sure Baptiste we're off the ball, 11. to Rod Griffin, who can really wind up. And get an offload away for Mead. Just sitting in behind him for that offload, Baptiste. Move now, get square. In that line, wait. Wait, go. Puara passes straight to Page. Last move now. 25 years of age now, Luke. Go, well done. Baptiste fires the ball for Asaboas. He kicks some pressure coming here for the men at the back. But it's a good catch. Willie Army, he gets away from me, passes. Happy to promote the footy inside their 10 metre zone. Turning Eddie Gio around. Stargroth Amin was up there for Papua New Guinea, looking left and right, trying to work out how he was going to stop this counter attack. And assisted by some teammates, he does enough, but the penalty is awarded. Much talk about one referee versus two on the field. And our man in charge tonight, Robert Hicks, has had a fair game break. He has. He has. I think also on the test match last night, we've seen the one referee as well. And it was smooth and there was no complications. Or, yeah, I think I think he's, he's an argument for one referee. Daniel Sofini spotted a hole, just angled in his run and nearly found a way through. Good meter, Saifidi. Putting Fiji on the front foot. Moth and Recky for Tyrone Phillips. He wanted a straight runner. Braden Riliami is that man, but he's cut down by Sisawanga. In fact, it's Okio, and now it's dropped by Moth and Recky. Riliami had Sisawanga right there, but instead took the tackle from Kato Okio. And Moth and Recky. He just had a look. He knew the space was out wide. He knew he had the numbers. You'll see there, he looked before he caught the football. He was already passing the ball before he got into his hands. And unfortunately, he's let himself down. He knows it. Poor Moth and Recky. Critical part of the game now because they haven't, they've had good field position. They haven't had much of it. And they had an opportunity gone beating on this occasion. They really should have come up with, with a try there on the right-hand edge. And you can see... In the second half, the completion rate, 75% Papua New Guinea, 40% for Fiji, four from 10 sets. Really does explain why they find themselves in this position in the second half. After being 13 of 16 in the first half.
Fiji. I wish half time never came. PNG stacked with players from the Hunters who play in the Intrust Super Cup. They narrowly missed the finals in their first season of that competition. Went close to the grand final last year and sit prominently on the table again. So they're in the second tier up there and Fiji hoping to be given the green light for inclusion in the New South Wales Premiership next season. Here's a room for PNG into backfield again. Support from Noki, who's pulled down. Numbers left. That's the way they go. And it's been intercepted. Fiji on the counter now. They were at sixes and sevens, the Fijians, but what an intercept taken by Jane Storer. Their captain, right on the spot, at the right time. Well, it, well it's unbelievable play from Storer. The Fijians are out on their feet. They can't even get in position to run the football. So Fiji runs on the ball now. Papua New Guinea had the beat. So Fiji gets through the Papua New Guineans. Now they're on the attack. It's his second barnstorming run in the space of two minutes. Phillips throws it out and finds support. Gino puts it down. After being so good for a double, all of a sudden, Eddie Gio's hands just desert him in quick succession. Well, it's just fatigue. They are out on their feet, tired, defending their own try line down the other end of the field. Storer comes up with an intercept, then all of a sudden they find themselves in attacking field position. And he's just out, Gio's gone. He's cramped up, he's run from one end to the other. All he has to do is catch the football. He just said, then I'm gone. He wouldn't be used to the intensity of this test match and the speed at which this game has been played at. And it's exciting rugby league between both teams. And it's been high quality. Look at these fans, they're enjoying it. Andy Raymond, what's it like from ground level? Absolutely amazing. And they have come in early in their red and in their blue to support Samoa and also Tonga. One group of fans at one end of the park, the other at the other end of the park. There is a heap of PNG and Fiji supporters here. But again, it is just generally a party atmosphere. They're all going to stay and watch both games, and they're starting to get a little loud. And it's your job to keep them off the field as the evening wears on, Andy. Here's PNG from deep inside their own territory, clinging to a two-point lead. If they look up at the scoreboard, they'll see there's still a long way to go. 14 minutes will be an eternity in this one. But right now, they're on top of the scoreboard and they're on top in the game in terms of the momentum. A couple of runs from Daniel Saifidi, perhaps the exception. Here's Page. Actors, Papua New Guinea come forward again. Henry Noki, a couple of standout Get runs in the, the second right. half. Watson Boas kicks, and then he was held by a collar and pulled the ground. The referee missed that. Eyes on the ball and the chases. Evans. Braden Williami running off James Storer. Evans with support from Verna Kethi. He doesn't use his Roosters club mate. He takes the tackle from Noki. Storer ducks his way through the rock. Here's Sisawanga. Looks outside. Eddie Gio with two tries already. Ducking and weaving. He tried to get the ball away for Wanga who crashes over, but will come back for another knock-on. Well, once again, the idea was right from Gio, but it's the execution, and I have to put it down to fatigue. The poor fellas come up with a couple of bad options in the second half. Good work from Storer, who's really turned the game around for Fiji. Couple of nice runs out of dummy half. The pass then from Gio, not on. Take the tackle, mate. Quick play the ball, and off the back of that, the frustration from Cesa Wanga. He knew the opportunity, and the opportunity they just lost could be critical at the back end of this game. Only a two-point ball game. Papua New Guinea have been dominant in this second half, but Fiji still fighting and still throwing a lot 
of the defence of Papua New Guinea. Geo playing such a role in this game tonight. I'm glad Fiji said, make sure you call him Eddie Geo, not Etuati Geo Nimamanathawa. <laughs> New Guinea. Beyond their 30 metre line. Yeah. Oh, Stardroth Armin with the first run now. The other winger, Justin Olam. <laughs> Baptiste scoots out of dummy half and had his arms held as he looked to pass. Hence the ball came free. Aku Yuate. Braden Williami, the game just starting to open up a little as fatigue sets in, but with fatigue also comes errors. Yeah, and on that occasion, you need to have more awareness of what your teammates are doing at this time. They're tired, Fiji. Williami came up with a nice run, but the offload wasn't on. The players weren't pushing up, they weren't ready for it. And they're all in back play on their haunches or just trying to get a breather, trying to get themselves back into the match. It's been so quick and so intense, and they haven't had much football or possession of the football in the second half. So they just need to complete a set. And we spoke about game awareness. That was the wrong play at the wrong time for Braden Willie Army. And look at Fiji's completion rates in the second half. Four of 13, 36%. There's your problem, Fiji. Passing from the back of the scrum. Well, Tovo Puara will jump into the hooking role now. He's played more game for the PNG Hunters. Than anyone else, 57. Noki. Henry Noki. Baptiste shows it and then gives it to Luke Page. 10 metres out. In great position, mid sets. Mead. Running off Asa Boas. Tackled by Vunakethi. Page crashes sideways into Evans. Puara spins through the tackle, runs across field. Well, Togo Puara fires a long ball. Nene McDonald running off his hooker. And Nene, in his fifth game for PNG, scores what could be one of their more important tries. Well, you can see the excitement on the faces of the Papua New Guinean fans, but also the players. They have come to play the underdog. Boas steps off his right, players alive. Puara, sorry, he's been unbelievable today and tonight for the Papua New Guinean side. And Nene McDonald carries his four from the Gold Coast Titans to take the lead out of six points, but Puara, he's running at a dummy half, his passing game left to right, bullet-like pass to Nene McDonald. He's been close to the best player in the field, Puara, for Papua New Guinea tonight, and he's just shown why. He's come up with a clutch play at the critical time that could possibly win the match for Papua New Guinea. Long way to go, but a big kick ahead. The 21-year-old, Nene McDonald, who played with Papua New Guinea at the 2013 World Cup again last year. Here he is tonight. He'll be Prime Minister of Papua New Guinea <laughs> when he wakes up in the morning if they go on to win this one. Well, you, you would have liked to have seen him probably get his hands on the ball a little bit more, but he's, it's hard for him being on the, in the centres. I'd like, I mean, if you didn't have the Boas brothers playing so well on the halves, you could play him at 5-8, but because they've been so good and they have brought so much to the Papua New Guinea team, you can see why they've got Nene McDonald in the centres still, but for mine, Puare has been a standout for, for both teams. The dummy half, the number nine, and you can see why they put Baptiste on the bench. I mean, you, you think of Kurt Baptiste, you think he's going to start. I mean, he's, he's, he's a dominant player. He plays first grade for Canberra and has an impact when he does play. But Puare has held him out for good reason. An important kick right here for Asa Boas, the policeman. He starts it online, steers it through just. They go ahead by eight, PNG 24 over VG 16. That's a big kick. That was pressure from Boas. That's thinking out to eight points. We know Fiji are gonna come back at some stage, so he's got him out to two try lead in.
Still time for Fiji. They try a short kickoff. Seven and a half remaining. Plenty of time to run in a couple of tries and but the short kickoff. Well, there's an accidental offside here, Matty. There's an accidental offside. And it's a penalty to PNG. It was a beautiful kick for Fiji. And they, they knocked it back, but it's come off the head and back into wrong 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 giver. Who's then been offside in offside position? Spotted by was it Batachi who told the referee and the call came relatively late. But PNG ahead by eight. Here it is. So he taps it back, comes off the head of Uate, then forward into wrong giver. As described by you, Braith. Well done, and PNG happy with more possession. Timothy Lomai. Baptiste. Through Watson Boas, and he finds Page on the fly. Luke Page. Here's the hooker. Tova Puara. You're right, what a game, as has this man, Henry Noki. Four, release Kane, all the way. Go, no square Kane. Baptiste Page. With three Fijians to stop him. Led by Braden Williami and Daniel Saifiti. And a mistake by Boas. Watson Boas lost it into James Storer. Daniel Saifiti, he turned 20 this week. Haven't the Saifiti twins, Daniel and Jacob, been a light for Newcastle? Young talent emerging, still youthful. Eddie Gio gets to halfway. It's a big burden to carry for the Saifidis this season, and I think they're handling it well. Chui Kamakamika. Evans fires the ball for Tyrone Phillips. Braden Williami tried to put a move on Kato Otio, who was having none of it, and flung him to ground. Evans, Mothenrecki, kicks across field. Stargroth Armin couldn't get a jump. It's still there for Fiji. And maybe Eddie Gio is sitting on a hat trick. Last tackle. It's the last tackle. Here we have a try. Can you check all what happens around the challenge in the air, please? And it's alarm. Is it? Oh. No, it's Amin, sorry, who can't get a play at the football off. off the back of a nice kick from Fiji. And you'll see Sisa Wonga comes in with a beautiful tap back to Gio. It bounces up. Wonga comes in now, his right arm. You'll see he gets in there, taps it back. He jumps above the contact rest. Contact by 16 is okay. Here it is here. Playing on now to the Clean play at it. Good execution, smart play Fiji from hand Cesar in Wonga. Front of the ball and makes initial and there's nothing, nothing wrong with that. It goes backwards. Guillo gets his hands to it, makes the catch, more importantly. I don't really know why we're going to look at this again. Look at that. That's just perfect by Cesar Wonga. The ball is knocked backwards and collected cleanly Good by the play. Fiji and Winger. Comes up with a beautiful option to turn it back to Gio. That's going to be seen on the right-hand side. Of the evening the and an important try. The board. And Fiji are back. Yeah, it's I'm a hat-trick that looked out. like it wouldn't happen after a couple of drops in great position. Eddie Gio, now he has it. Wait, count them, Eddie. One, two, three. Hey, your time's off because you're waiting on us. What an international debut. For the Nadira Panther. They waste no time with the kick and drill it straight down the middle. Sidaveni, Moth and Recky makes it to the difference. Well, you can't blink. You will miss an important play just like that from Fiji when all was gone. Five minutes to go. Moth and Recky, beautiful kick. And it's just good play from Cesar Wong to get himself into a position to make a play at the four. Gio benefits from that for his third try of the evening. And all of a sudden, four and a half minutes to go, we've got a two-point ball game. Fiji haven't been in this match in the second half. Now they're only two points behind. 30% completions in the second half from Fiji. Yet they find themselves with ball in hand, down by two, but with a bit of time up their sleeve. 
Elonie Vunikethi starts the sets. Here's Rungitha. They won't go down wondering Fiji. Good metres, it's a strong set so far as Tui Kamikamika. Takes the third tackle, eight short of halfway, Kane Evans. Threatens to offload and does. Moth and Recky across field. He's been the moth and wrecking ball at times tonight for Fiji. Storer. Final play from 30 outs. 24-22 Fiji. The kick comes from Moth and Recky. He didn't get it as he would have liked. And Papua New Guinea have it. And they stay error free. It's Adex Wera. Back there for the Kummels. Well, they tried. There was a spring in the step of the Fiji. There's no doubt about it. That we hadn't seen so far in the second half. They had a big set of six. They marched down the field. But Moth and Recky just tried to be a little bit too fancy with a little banana kick back on the inside for Phillips. And it wasn't the right option probably at that time of the game. And PNG running the football hard. Quick play the ball. Justin Holland, not for the first time tonight. Running hard, that is. David Meads. The reason PNG find themselves in front by two are uh, his first half try savers. Rod Griffin, a steady hand and a leg drive. He's experienced. Just the man they'll want to control the end of this game. Boas drives it into touch, 10 metres out. Good set PNG. And the good crowd that is built here at Pertec Stadium will be enjoying the end of this one. Oh, they're on the edges of their seat, no doubt about it. The game is in the balance. And talking about the game in the balance, the fans are fired up, as you can see. They're waiting to see Tonga and Samara after this. But game awareness under pressure. The Boas brothers have brought that to Papua New Guinea. Something they've struggled with in years gone by is closing out matches and playing games according to the situation that is in front of them. And, and this is the situation right now. They need to put the ball over the touchline, give the team a rest, wind the clock down, and they need to execute. And they certainly did that. Two and a bit minutes left. Fiji looking for a go-ahead try. No golden point. If they kick a goal, it will... Lock us up and we'll settle for a draw. Stora. This is Kamakamika. Good metres. Tui Kamakamika. Daniel Saifidi threatened a pass to Willie Army, the support player, inside. And they're going to concede the penalty for obstruction, accidental. Well, accidental, he didn't gain an advantage. He hit the ground, Safiti. I understand why the referee has given the penalty, but Safiti hit the deck. As soon as he hit Willie Army, he goes to the ground. And there was no advantage for Fiji. You'll see he hits him, he takes the player out, but he knows Safiti. Good awareness hits the ground. Like, they normally let that play on. Big penalty now with only a minute and 17 seconds to go. PNG hold on this set of six. They're nearly home. The team that hasn't had an international win outside PNG since 2000. 16 years down the track. They are a minute and a few seconds away from ticking that box. Nene McDonald. Wait till you see the celebrations if the Kummels can hold on. Into the final minute we go. Rod Griffin. Stopped by Vunikethi. Baptiste. Nothing fancy from PNG. David Mead. Just straight up and down. Happy to see the second slip away. This is tackle four. Kuara knows what's going on, and it's a one on one strip. Hold on. Here comes Rongida. He gives the ball away for Kane Evans, who gallops. Past the 30 metre line, held by Otio, who defensively has been strong. Well, Fiji, they've got to look to pass the ball. There's only a couple of plays left. Who's going to get it? Tyrone Phillips. He gets the ball away. Moth and Recky. Here's Elone Vunakethi. He spots a bit of room and takes a tackle from Adex Wera. 
who lifted a much bigger man. And PNG celebrate a famous victory. Their country will be going off celebrating defeat of Fiji 24-22.